Welcome to the lecture titled Reviews of DF Based Identification. We shall revisit DF Based Identification Techniques and see what difficulties we have or what benefits we have from the DF Based Identification Techniques. Now, consider the closed loop system subjected to a gain controller. The gain of the controller is 8.5 and the process is the first order plus dead time process with uh, transfer function e to the power minus 2 s e to the power minus 2 s upon 10 s plus 1. When this first order plus dead time process is subjected to a gain controller with gain of 8.5, what type of output is expected from that? system closed loop system the output becomes oscillatory. When the gain is lower then the output becomes stable and when the gain is increased further then we expect unstable or unbounded output from the first order plus date time system. Okay. But at exactly the gain of 8.5 with a gain of 8.5 we do get sustained oscillatory output of this form. So, we do get a limit cycle output, limit cycle output of this form. Now, also the plot is showing the input signal of the system. So, this is the input and this is the output we have from this. Now, the reference is 1. So, when you take the average value of the input signal, the average will be 1. So, average value of input A B G or input, if the input signal to the process is denoted by u and the output by y, then y average will be 1 and u average will be 1, thus giving us the steady state gain of the process as 1. So, I will not discuss about the steady state gain, rather the point of considering this case or case study is that the when the controller gain is 8.5, we do get a limit cycle output. Then when the Nyquist diagram of the loop gain or loop transfer function is taken. What is the loop transfer function now? The loop gain is now 8.5 times g s that means 8.5 e to the power minus 2 s upon 10 s plus 1. So, when the Nyquist plot of the loop gain is considered then the Nyquist diagram assumes this form. Okay. From here what information we do get? We do have the negative real axis cr crossing at a frequency of omega u or omega c r critical frequency or ultimate frequency of 0 0.842 radian per second. Okay. So, the Nyquist diagram shows that the operating point has been pushed to minus 1 plus j 0 with the help of the gain controller which is having a gain of 8.5. Now, when that value is changed then you will have different type of Nyquist diagram. So, from this the objective of showing this Nyquist diagram is that we do get sustained oscillatory output of this form when the loop gain is loop gain is equal to minus 1. Why that is so? Because the operating point is now the one shown by this rectangle. So, this is our operating point, this is our operating point. 
So, with other values of 8.5, the operating point will change and you will go to either stable operation or unstable operation or stable operating region given by this or unstable operating region given by this. If please that part of the Nyquist diagram is not shown, you can make out easily. So, what do we have found? When the loop gain is equal to minus 1, that time we do get sustained oscillatory output from the closed loop system. Now, how to identify the parametric model of a transfer function model for the pro process dynamics or plant dynamics? Initially, we assume a transfer function model for the dynamics of the process. Let that transfer function model be defined by G s is equal to k e to the power minus theta s upon T 1 s plus 1 and we know that the controller gain G c s is equal to 8.5. Now, when the controller is put then we have found sustained oscillatory output with the oscillating frequency of omega c r is equal to 0 0.844 radian per second. Now, as I have told the Nyquist diagram gives us the information that the loop gain is equal to minus 1 or the at the operating point when the gain is equal to 8.5, the controller gain is 8.5, the operating point is pushed to a point of minus 1 plus j 0 and the loop gain is equal to minus 1. What is that loop gain now? Loop gain is nothing but the controller gain times the process dynamics. So, that way we have got the expression 8.5 times k e to the power minus theta s upon T 1 s plus 1 as the loop gain and the loop gain has to be minus 1 to obtain sustained oscillatory output. So, using this expression when the magnitude of these expressions are equated magnitudes means when the magnitudes of both sides of this expressions uh, this this equation are equated we do get an expression of the form in frequency domain mod of g c j omega c r g j omega c r is equal to 1. This is what you are getting from equating magnitudes of the loop gain. Okay. Now, when the phase angles of both sides of again the, the loop gain is considered, then we do get an expression of the form angle of g c j omega c r g j omega c r is equal to minus omega c r theta minus 10 inverse omega c r t 1 is equal to minus pi. So, where from you are getting all these things? Basically, first you try to find the loop gain in frequency domain, how that will look like 8.5 times k e to the power minus j omega j omega c r theta divided by j omega c r t 1 plus 1 okay, is equal to minus 1. Now, you take the magnitude of this expression, magnitudes means magnitudes of both sides of this expression when you equate that you get this, which can be further simplified and obtained in the form of omega c r t 1 square plus 1 is equal to 8.5 square giving ultimately t 1 is equal to 10. Thus, one parameter of this transfer function model t 1 can be estimated using the loop gain. Similarly, when the phase angles of both sides of this loop gain or the condition that gives results in limit cycle output are considered, phase angles of both sides are equated, then we get this analytical expression. Simplification of this expression results in the explicit expression theta is equal to pi minus 10 inverse 8.44 divided by 
0.844 equal to 2. Why I am hurriedly explaining this one? Already we have discussed this example in one of our lecture earlier. Okay. Thus, we have been able to identify the parametric model or of the transfer function um, uh, model of the process dynamics H g s is equal to e to the power minus 2 s upon 10 s plus 1 or the theta has been estimated as 2 t has been estimated as 10. So, we have been able to estimate accurately the parameters of the transfer function model because the Nyquist diagram has been considered appropriately. How that is so? That will be evident after some time when I consider the same example under different situations and when the describing function is used. Now, so in this case, in place of a controller with a gain or a gain controller, in place of a gain controller, we have used a relay. Earlier we were using some gain controller. Why we are using a relay now? The main reason for that is it is very difficult to obtain limit cycle output with a gain controller because you need to go on increasing or decreasing the gain of the gain controller heuristically. So, you start with some non-zero value 1. So, you go on increasing the gain value 1, 2, 3, 4 then you slowly increase when you come to 8, 8, 8.1, 8.2 at 8.5 you will get sustained oscillatory output, but you will take much time, you will spend much time to obtain this correct value of the gain. And if you by mistake exit that value by a small magnitude also 8.501 now in place of 8.5, if the magnitude become 8.501 or 55 then the output will be unstable or unbounded. So, there is risks involved with the gain controller, how to find correct magnitude or value for the gain controller. To avoid that, a relay is used in the closed loop, which guarantees you sustained oscillatory output or limit cycle output irrespective of any value of relay setting other than the setting of 0. So, when the relay setting is not equal to 0, then this process definitely results in sustained oscillatory output. So, it is very easy, I do not mind what value of what, what parameter of relay is to be there. So, that is where the gain controllers are normally avoided or uh, uh, the limit cycle using gain controller concept is normally avoided. Now, with the use of a relay of course, I have been able to get this sustained oscillatory output shown by the pink color and the yellow one shows us the output from the relay or process input, process input during the auto tuning test now or identification test. Now, what type of output you do get when a symmetrical relay with parameter h equal to 1 is used, a sustained symmetrical process output is guaranteed in the absence of of course, static load disturbances. Then when the measurement of peak amplitude and the ultimate frequencies are taken, we do obtain for this particular case a peak amplitude of A is equal to 0 0.181 and ultimate frequency of magnitude 7.332 seconds, which giving us the critical frequency as 2 pi upon P u is equal to 0 0.857 radian per second. Okay. So, this is how we do obtain the peak amplitude and ultimate frequency or critical frequency from the measurements. Now, now let me go to the Nyquist diagram, diagram of the closed loop process now. The loop gain is 
is the gain of the controller in place of a controller I have used a relay therefore, the gain of the relay is approximate at h 4 h by pi a keep in mind the gain of the device relay is now 4 h by pi a we have already derived how we obtain the gain of the relay using describing function. So, when this value of the gain is used along with that of the dynamics of the process which is in this case e to the power minus 2 s e to the power minus 2 s upon 10 s plus 1 I do get an aqueous plot or diagram of this form. Now, there is one interesting observation this this point in red particularly this point corresponds to the point minus 1 plus j 0 or the neg uh, negative real axis with real value of minus 1. Okay. Whereas, the, the Nyquist diagram of the loop gain is crossing the negative real, uh, negative real axis at some other point the operating point has got shifted now unlike the earlier Nyquist diagram where the operating point was at minus 1 this is not so and the operating point has shifted to some value of minus 0 0.813. So, the when the equivalent gain of relay is considered for identification of plant model parameters or transfer function model parameters. When you write the condition for limit cycle as the loop gain equal to minus 1 that is not true. When the loop gain is equal to minus 1 this is considered then we may get inaccurate estimation for the time constant and time delay associated with the transfer function model. So, when this loop gain would have been given as in place of minus 1 as minus 0 0.813 that must result in correct estimation or the estimation errors associated with the estimation of plant model parameters will be significantly low. Okay. So, this loop gain concept is very important outright we write that a limit cycle is possible or is obtained when the loop gain is 1 and with this uh, loop gain is minus 1 and with that assumption we do carry out our analysis and find a explicit expressions for the parameters of transfer function model. Okay. So, let me see really we are getting erroneous results or not when the shifted point of the Nyquist diagram is used in place of the correct point. So, what is done basically? Now, the relay is having a gain of k h upon pi a and the um, process has got the dynamics k e to the 4 h by pi a k e to the power minus theta s upon T s plus 1 yes T s plus 1 I am using the symbol T for the time constant. So, this is equated to minus 1 when this is written in the frequency domain we get 4 h upon pi a into k e to the power minus j omega theta divided by j omega t plus 1 is equal to minus 1. Now, e, the magnitude of the left hand side becomes 4 h upon pi a times uh, k divided by omega t square plus 1 root is equal to 1. So, equating the magnitudes of both sides equating the magnitudes of both sides we do get this expression which can ultimately be simplified in the form of omega t square plus 1 is equal to I can write out rate 4 k h divided by pi a 
square further giving us t is equal to 4 k h by pi a square minus 1 root upon omega. Similarly, equating the phase angles of both sides of this expression will give us minus omega theta minus 10 inverse omega t is equal to minus pi implies theta is equal to directly I will bring this pi minus uh, 10 inverse omega t upon omega. So, these are the two explicit expressions we do obtain from the analysis of the loop gain, but this loop gain this, this, this inequality is necessary for generating limit cycle output. Okay? Now, so when I substitute the measurements of E omega here omega C r is used please keep in mind in place of omega please write omega C r C r. So, omega C r will come in place of omega C r. So, simply substitute omega by omega C r anywhere you have omega. Then you get the expressions T is this one already I have derived and theta is equal to this one. When I substitute the measured values of E h and omega C r, then I, I estimate the model parameters h t is equal to 8.1249 and theta is equal to 1.9999, but the process has got t of 10 and theta of 2. Therefore, the model parameter is underestimated, which parameter the model parameter time constant is underestimated by 18.75 percentage and theta is underestimated by 0.035 percentage. Okay? So, this is the estimation errors we have when you use the condition that loop gain is equal to minus 1 to generate limit cycle oscillation. Okay? Now, I will do so when when that that condition is not used rather when I will use the condition that actually your loop gain 4 h by pi a times k e to the power minus theta s upon T s plus 1 is equal to minus 0 0.8 as you had seen 0 0.813 because actually the system is operating at the point minus 0 0.813. Then certainly the uh, loop equation will result in correct estimation for the parameters of the transfer function model. So, when this, uh, this expression is analyzed now in place of 4h upon pi a into k e to the power minus theta s upon T s plus 1 is equal to minus 1 in place of minus 1 when I use the real operating point which is at minus 0 0.813, then the parameters of the transfer function models are estimated now h. You see the presence of 0 0.813. So, now the formula will get modified. So, I will have here 0 0.813 divided and similarly this expression I have no effect. Then the t is the time constant is ex estimated as t is equal to 10.029 and theta is equal to 1.968. Therefore, the estimation error has come down to a value of 0.3 percent for the time constant and 1.6 percent for the time delay. Unlike the earlier case, which had got the estimation error of around 18.75 percent. Now, that has come down to 0.3 percent. Therefore, it is very important to consider this point that when the describing function analysis is analysis is used for the relay, then you have to look at the operating point 
in place of the operating point of minus 1 plus j 0, the operating point has shifted somewhere else and unless that information is used correctly, this operating point has shifted from this one. This should have been the operating point ideally as per the analytical expression we have been using during our lectures on df based identification the operating point is somewhere else when you use the approximation of relay by describing function okay so this point is very important as i am telling unless correct operating point is used or correct analytical expression like the loop gain outright instead of writing loop gain is equal to minus 1 you should write loop gain is equal to minus 0 0.813 please look at the point the negative real, real axis crossing point okay so the, when this loop gain is equated to minus 0 0.813 you will be able to estimate accurate parameters for the models of the transfer function okay uh, for the models of the dynamics of the system now, I will go to the uh, online identification. Whatever we discussed so far were related to offline identification. Is the online identification now is subjected to estimation error or not that we shall see. So, in the online identification, the relay is connected in parallel with a controller. Now, again the relay is approximated by its describing function or the relay is approximated by an equivalent gain of the form 4 h upon pi a, where a is the peak amplitude of the fundamental component of the output signal. So, when a symmetrical relay test is conducted, a sustained symmetrical process output is obtained and from that when the measurements are made then we can get typical values for the same process. Now, I will when I take the process as g s is equal to e to the power minus 2 s upon chain s plus 1 and use the same value of the relay setting h h equal to 1 and whatever the controller when the controller is used as g c s is equal to some let us say some simple 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 upon s. Then I do get sustained oscillatory output and measurement of the peak amplitude and the ultimate frequency ultimate period gives us the peak amplitude as a is equal to 0 0.203 and ultimate period as 7.750 giving us all critical frequency as omega c r is equal to 0 0.81. How to obtain all these things you know only thing you need to do is when you are simulating this online identification scheme the controller again I am saying use the controller a p i controller g p i of magnitude 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 by s. Let me repeat because this is very important and relay setting is height equal to 1 relay height or parameter is set to 1 and the process is the same process we have been considering in our earlier example e to the power minus 2 s upon 10 s plus 1. Okay. Now, for this case okay, already the simulation diagram is given over here. What type of limit cycle output is obtained? We do get the sustained oscillatory output of this form, this is the output I get and when the peak is measured it is found to be of the magnitude 0 0.203 and the period if you start from here to here the period is approximately 7.75 seconds as it has been um, given earlier 7.75 second. Okay. So, I will do the analysis of this system now how to estimate the model parameters. Now, uh, for the online system we do have the p i controller connected in parallel in parallel with the relay therefore, the loop gain will be now given by 4 h upon pi a or let me write 
के यू अल्टीमेट गेन एच द फोर एच अपन पाई ए देन ऑल्सो द पी आई कंट्रोलर इज गिवेन बाई जी सी एस इज गिवेन बाई सपोज के पी प्लस के आई लेट एस यूज द सेम टाइप ऑफ सिम्बल के पी प्लस के आई अपन एस देन द लूप गेन विल बी नाउ के यू प्लस के पी प्लस के आई अपन एस टाइम्स के ई टू दि पावर के ई टू दि पावर माइनस थीटा एस अपन टी एस प्लस वन ओके सो के इज वन सो हियर आई हैव नॉट टेकन के 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 इज दिस वन के इक्वल टू वन हियर डेयर मैटर सो आई विल गिव द जेनरल एक्सप्रेशन फॉर द लूप गेन वेन ऑनलाइन आइडेंटिफिकेशन इज कैरेट ऑन नाउ आई आई विल राइट नाउ इन फ्रीक्वेंसी डोमेन द लूप गेन एच के यू प्लस के पी प्लस के आई अपन जे ओमेगा सी आर के ई टू दि पावर माइनस जे ओमेगा सी आर थीटा डिवाइडेड बाई जे ओमेगा सी आर टी प्लस वन इज इक्वल टू माइनस वन नाउ इक्वेटिंग द मैग्नीच्यूड्स ऑफ बोथ साइड्स of the above equation what do we get we get ku plus kp square plus ki upon omega cr square root times k upon omega cr t square plus 1 root is equal to वन ओके देन गिविंग अस के यू प्लस के पी स्क्वायर प्लस के आई अपन ओमेगा सी आर स्क्वायर इज इक्वल टू टाइम्स के इज इक्वल टू ओमेगा सी आर टी square plus 1 root so when i simplify this one again i'll get omega cr t square is equal to uh, k square sorry root will come so k square now ku plus kp square plus ki upon omega cr square um, minus वन गिविंग अल्टीमेटली एन एक्सप्रेशन फॉर द टाइम कॉन्स्टेंट ऑफ द ट्रांसफर फंक्शन मॉडल एज टी इज इक्वल टू के स्क्वायर टाइम्स के यू प्लस के पी स्क्वायर प्लस के आई अपन ओमेगा सी आर स्क्वायर माइनस वन रूट डिवाइडेड बाई ओमेगा सी आर सो दिस द एक्सप्लीसीड एक्सप्रेशन फॉर टाइम कॉन्स्टेंट ऑफ द प्रोसेस मॉडल पैरामीटर टी व्हेन एन ऑनलाइन आइडेंटिफिकेशन स्कीम इज यूज्ड नाउ यूजिंग द मेजर्ड वैल्यूज ऑफ ए पी वी हैव सॉरी ए ए एच जीरो पॉइंट टू जीरो थ्री एंड पी यू एच सेवन पॉइंट सेवन फाइव और ओमेगा सी आर is equal to 0.8107 and similarly ku is equal to 4h upon pi a giving us uh, 6.272 when these values are substituted then we do obtain the t and the t will be now t when these values are substituted in the above expression t is calculated as 8. 
it should have been 10. So, how much error is estima, uh, estimation or error is associated due to the approximation of the relay by some describing function? It is having almost 20 percentage of error. It should have been 10. Now, we have got a value of 8.125. Similarly, for the time delay equating the phase angles of both sides equating the phase angles angles of both sides we get uh, an expression of the form 10 inverse minus k i divided by omega c r k u plus k p minus omega theta minus 10 inverse omega t is equal to minus pi implies omega theta is equal to pi plus 10 inverse minus k i upon omega c r k u plus k p minus 10 inverse omega t implies theta is equal to pi plus 10 inverse minus k i upon omega c r k u plus k p minus 10 inverse omega t divided by omega c r. So, this is the explicit expression we have obtained for the time delay of the transfer function model when an online identification scheme is considered. Okay. Now, when I again substitute the values necessary values a is equal to 0 0.203 or indirectly when I put k u is equal to 6.272 omega c r is equal to 0 0.8107 in the expression theta is calculated theta is calculated as theta is equal to 1.977. How much it should have been? Ideally, it should have been 2. As you know, in the simulation, we have considered a transfer function model with the time constant t is equal to 10 and the time delay of theta equal to 2. So, these are the ideal values. Whereas, the estimated values for the time constant is 8.125 and that of the time delay is now 1.977. So, it is also the estimation error is also there, but the estimation error for the time delay is very less. How much it is? It is uh, accurately it is minus 0 0.06 percentage. That means, the value has been underestimated by minus 0 0.0 uh, underestimated with an estimation error of minus 0 0.06 percent. How do I find these percentage errors? Suppose, it should have been 2, but it has been estimated as 1.977. So, the estimation error, let me use another slide. Uh, so, theta, sorry, we have some plot. So, theta is equal to this much. So, estimation error is the estimated value. So, estimated value exact value divided by exact value times 100. So, in this case if I use this then in that case how much it would be 1.977 minus 2 divided by 2 into 100 that is how I get an estimation error of minus 0 0.06 percentage. And in the earlier case estimation error associated with the time constant is estimation error error is 8.125 minus 10 divided by 10 into 100.
So, that is giving us a value of minus 20 percent approximately. Okay. So, what do we have found from this analysis that uh, because of the use of the describing function for the relay, the time constant and the time delay estimations are subjected to erroneous values and those are sometimes found to be of very high value. value. So, we have got estimation or error up to 20 percentage which are not tolerable or one should not allow so much of estimation error while identifying process dynamics. Now, I will see the Nyquist diagram for the closed loop system under relay control. So, what is this where from we are getting this Nyquist diagram? If you look at we have got the relay which is given by its equivalent again 4h upon pi a. Then we have got a controller connected in parallel with this one with the controller is 0.5 s plus 0.5 upon 0.5. Therefore, we are using the same P i controller. So, it will be 0.5 plus 0 0.5 upon s a P i controller and of course, we are using e to the power minus 2 s upon 10 s plus 1 for our analysis. So, the loop gain loop gain will be how much it would be 4 h upon pi a plus 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 upon s times e to the power minus 2 s upon 10 s plus 1. Again we have found 4 h upon pi a to be of the value uh, 6.67 uh, 6.272 giving us an expression for the loop gain as 6.272 plus 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 divided by s times e to the power minus 2 s upon 10 s plus 1. So, when the Nyquist plot of this loop gain is obtained, then we do get a Nyquist diagram of this form. Okay? So, all these are for positive frequencies and the upper plot is for negative frequencies. Okay? you are acquainted with the Nyquist diagram I, I do believe. Then the Nyquist diagram shows us that operating point has shifted substantially. The operating point should have been here because we are using the analytical expression that the loop gain is equal to minus 1. So, we take the operating point as minus 1 plus j 0. So, the operating point in the analysis is used as minus 1 plus j 0, whereas in real life the operating point is somewhere else. This is the operating point of the closed loop system. So, ideally it should have been here, but practically it has shifted to a value or, or a point with the coordinates almost given as uh, minus 0 0.833 plus j 0 because it is a small number the complex value is very small. So, in place of minus 1 the operating point it has gone to minus 0 0.833 okay? and the frequency of our oscillation is of course, the we have got slightly a different value because we may not have been able to locate exactly the 0 crossing point or negative real axis crossing point. It does not matter. Now, when one uses the loop gain or when I write the loop gain equation for this h, this is equated to minus 0 0.833833 8 
and carry on with the analysis. That means, find explicit expressions for time delay and time constant associated with the transfer function model, then the, the, the parameters can be estimated accurately. Let us see how we can find those t. So, what will be done now in this analysis now simply what you have to do k u plus k p plus k i by j omega c r times k e to the power minus j omega c r t c r theta upon j omega c r t plus 1 is equal to minus 0 0.833. So, what changes we will have in the expression for this one? Now, we will have the expression for time constant can be given now h the time constant h root of k upon 0 0.833 square times k u plus k p square plus k i upon omega c r square yes minus 1 divided by omega c r and similarly there will be no changes to the expression for theta because the the when you equate the phase angles of both sides this 0 0.833 or 1 is not going to give any or contribute any phase angle. So, that way the expression for theta will remain as it is which can be now 10 inverse minus k i upon omega k p plus k i minus 10 inverse omega t plus pi divided by omega c r. So, please use omega c r in place of omega. So, this is how now you get revised expressions for the time delay and time constant of the transfer function model. Now, what changes are there? Earlier we had 1 here, 1 in place of 0.833. So, when you use 0 0.833 and substitute now k, k u, k p, k i, omega c r which are known to us now, then we do get estimated value for t and t is estimated as 9.9937 in place of 10 and theta is estimated as the same value 1.9788 because there are no changes in place of 2. So, the estimation errors now estimation percentage estimation errors in the time constant has gone, gone down from 20 percentage to minus 0 0.06 percentage. Similarly, the percentage estimation error in theta has gone off gone off from minus 0 0.6 percentage to minus 1 percentage. So, the estimation error has increased in this case the estimation error has increased not significantly marginally, but overall if you look at the estimation errors final estimation errors basically those are of small values. In this case, absolute value of estimation error is 0 0.06 percent almost negligible and in the second case it is 1 percent which is tolerable. So, the estimation errors have been reduced significantly 
when the describing function based analysis uses, uses the correct operating point. So, this operating point to locate the correct operating point you need to do you need to find the Nyquist diagram and once you use Nyquist diagram then only you can overcome the problems associated with the describing function approximation for the dynamics of a relay. So, the relay has been approximated by some equivalent gain and th that is an approximation only due to that the operating point in the Nyquist diagram gets shifted. So, if the shifted point is considered in the analysis then accurate estimation for the model parameters can be obtained or achieved. Now, in the summary estimation of steady state gain by a separate relay test or by some other technique. So, we have not discussed here how the steady state gains are obtained rather we have concentrated our discussion into uh, to basically the estimation in uh, estimation of time constant and time delay the two important parameters of the transfer function model. Now, equivalent gain of the relay basically the relay dynamics has been approximated by an equivalent gain given by 4 h upon pi a. So, this is an approximation and this approximation results in substantial estimation errors in model parameters unless correct operating point is identified and used in the analytical expressions. Both the offline and online identification schemes are subjected to estimation errors because the relay is approximated by some gain. How to reduce estimation errors? Estimation errors can be reduced by many ways. One way of reducing the estimation errors is to use time domain based time domain based analysis of of the relay control systems relay control systems another is to use state space based analysis of the waveforms of the sustained oscillatory output oscillatory output. So, there are many techniques those can be used to get estimated parameters with reduced estimation errors and basically the time domain based estimation techniques result in less estimation errors. Thanks.